LG OLED C2 for 2022. Check the timestamps below, measurements, dimensions and other points of interest. I'm going to check the top for heavy bits first, then the box lifts off. Remote control and instruction book pack, and then just some cover plates. Remote control and instruction book pack. Plates for the pedestal stand and back of the TV. Holly out, box off. Smaller pedestal base in the back. Quick look at the TV from the front, side profile, and a quick back shot. Remote instruction and accessories pack. Yeah, interesting. Plug in IR blasters. I'm guessing they plug into the TV. You can control your set top boxes, whatever other devices. Through your TV to those devices. So that'll plug into the TV, IR blaster in front of the devices to send the infrared from your remotes to your hidden devices. Self-adhesive pads in there as well. See that? Cool. Some various cable clamps, so into the back of the TV you can guide the cables around, clamp them in place to keep them tidy. Screw pack for the pedestal stand. So some M4 screws there as well. AA batteries for the Magic remotes. Four self-tapping screws there for the stand as well. Okay, quick setup guide, energy rating labels, point of sale sticker for the TV in a showroom, and some instruction book bits. Magic remote for 2022, covered in plastic. Power on and off button, channel numbers. Guide button, audio description or subtitles, volume up and down, channels up and down, mute button, home button, microphone for voice commands. So press that, the microphone's actually up there and you can do your voice commands. Input or source button, up, down, left, right and enter. That wheel also scrolls up and down, so it's in for enter or scroll up and down. Back button, shortcut to the settings, hold it down, it should take you to all settings. Coloured buttons for apps and media playback, shortcuts to Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Rakuten, Google and Alexa. Flip it over, double A batteries into the bag. Quick look at the quick setup guide. Got a bit there about studying it and do's and don'ts and how to handle it. List of included contents with the TV. Unpacking the box, two of you lifting it out, laying on a large flat surface, larger than the TV. To show it to be laid down flat, first we've got assembling that pedestal base, fitting the base to the TV with it laid down. Using those cable guides there at the bottom to guide your cables and keeping them tidy when it's on its stand. List of the inputs on the TV and what to connect to them. Putting the batteries in the remote and the settings button to pair, help if you need it. Pairing the remote if it doesn't automatically pair to the TV, usually they do automatically. Turning it on, quick bit of key dimensions there for the 55, 65 and 77 OLED. Moving down, we've got wall mount dimensions, visa dimensions as well, and the required bolts. Pedestal base, it's the same pedestal base for the 55 and 65 according to the stickers. It's a far more sensible size compared to previous years where it's basically the width of the TV. I'll get the dimensions of this and include them with the TV dimensions when I do that bit, but nice bit of aluminium there anyway. Brushed finish. Plastic on the back. Underneath, we've got a swivel base there as well. So the TV should be able to swivel, which is quite a nice touch as well. I'll put that base down. Yeah, pretty cool. Twists about. So, underneath on that swivel base there, 
it's got rubber feet so it shouldn't slide about and mark the surface also a few plastic feet there which will aid it to slide around and hopefully not mark anything either pretty cool here's the back plate to attach it to the tv we've got three little slots there to help locate that should drop into there real those self-tapping screws that i've lost you can see we've got two holes two screws there and i did have to push that down with a bit of pressure to expose those screw holes two of the self-tapping screws into there and there quickly wind those in and two more self-tapping screws under the base so if you can't see those swivel bit needs to be central self-tapping screws into here and here whip them in Real. that's that ready to go on the tv oh it's there though does it show how well does it show at the back we've got this removable cable guy so i can pop that into there when i've got my cables in place just to guide them down Very cool and then if we want to get the cables out again we can lift it off Ooh. TV is now laid on a large flat surface as per the quick setup guide. This is the bottom of the TV here. Here's my pedestal stand. And I can see I've got two little slots that I can't see because I put the camera the wrong way around. Got four threaded holes. That pops into there like so. Drop my four screws in. Quickly wind those in. And one more thing, it's that plastic cover, tabs into the slots above, pops down like that, and we're in. That can go back on I suppose for now. While we're looking at the back, we've still got these little cable guide things here, which will guide the cables from the connections running down that side and across and down there. So I can pop one into there. One into there as well, he says. You can just see, well, I probably don't show up, but all those little holes, there are two holes bigger there and there for these to pop into. And then we can guide our cables down there, clip those back over just to keep them tidy along the back, he says. Down our guide there, underneath and underneath there. Keep it nice and neat. Just while I've got it laid here, the back is slightly different this year, so the textured back. There's no sticky thing on it this year. I'm not sure if that's actually aluminium as well. Maybe it's to help wick away the heat, might help reduce sort of screen discoloration or screen burn. Also towards the top, tiny slot there, just common interface or CI card slot. So I'll get the camera onto the inputs at the side. Starting off at the top, we've got USB in, three of those, all marked CI plus as well. HDMI is 1, 2, 3 and 4. HDMI 2 is Enhanced Audio Return Channel. HDMI 4K at 120Hz. So I'm, I'm gathering it's all of them because it doesn't specify a particular one. LAN or Wide Internet Input. Digital Optical Audio Out. Terrestrial Aerial and Satellite Input. Also we've got that IR blaster bit. So we can plug our IR blasters in there guide those buds in front of one of the devices and it should emit the infrared from the remote control so send the signals through your TV to your other devices whether it's whatever PVR, sky boxes or DVD, Blu-ray players and again just at the top there we've got that CI card slot reader onto the dimensions nice sensible sized central base 47 centimeters or 18 and a half inches. The depth of it from the back to the front, 23 centimeters or nine inches. Whatever it stood on to the bottom of the TV, just under six centimeters or just over two and a half inches. 
to the top of the TV, 75 and a half centimeters or 29 and three quarter inches. Width of it, 55 inch model, 122 centimeters or 48 inches. TV at its thickest part has got a nice thin screen. That's probably four or five millimeters. The actual TV body itself, excluding the pedestal stand, is 45.1 millimeters. Looking at it from the back, piece of dimensions, it's a 300 mil by 200 mil visa pattern there. M6 bolts, 20 mil or something, it should probably be fine. On the bottom of the TV to the center of that first visa hole is about 218 millimeters. TV is now mounted on a fixed flat wall mount. I'm going to stick that in a separate video because it's getting long. So I'm going to say peely peely and get off the nice screen protector to a pristine screen underneath. If I can find where to peel the bloody thing. Wide it with mains, wide internet, aerial, HDMI for my Sky Q, optical in case I have a soundbar and HDMI for a soundbar in the future. Select installation method, TV or mobile, so go for mobile, it'll transfer some of your Wi-Fi, account details and so on to the TV. I'm just going to go TV step by step. And again, location settings, so England and UK or English and UK. Wide network connected. Terms and conditions, so select all and agree. So it's detected by Sky set top box, which is Sky Q, HDMI 1. So ways to watch TV, I've got two sources. So you could go set top box only, but as a backup, I'm gonna go TV and set top box. So that'll use my aerial for the TV set top box is the Sky. Pop your postcode in for regional programming and next. So here to optimize your sound, either on a stand or a wall mount. So it will tune the sound depending on how you've got it installed. Mine is wall mounted. So AI Picture Pro and Sound Pro should analyze the content you're watching and optimize the sound and the picture accordingly. Because this is, because this is a demo, I'm gonna leave it as standard. So it's like Samsung's adaptive picture and sound, I guess, same sort of thing. So we can have it on always ready mode with screen savers and so on in the background. I'm going to not do that and just say next. So when I turn it off, it goes all the way off. Again, program tuning. So I've only got antenna connected. So that's going to tune in the TV channels. Digital only search will scan the digital. So then skip analog. If you've got old Sky HD coming through an analog, you need to go for the smart and get the analog as well. But I'm just gonna go digital only. We'll be back in a minute when it's complete. Now finish tuning. It says select your preferred region. It's not so much your preferred region, it's where your aerial is pointing for your strongest signal. Mine is Yorkshire. And is it finished? Okay, and done. So universal control settings. I could set up my remote to control my Sky Q. If that's your thing, do it. For me, I'd probably just use the Sky remote all the time when I'm watching Sky. So let's have a look. I'm gonna say exit. Okay, sign into your LG account for downloading more apps and so on. I haven't got one at the moment, so I'm going to just skip. Okay, and you can select 
apps for first installation so I'd probably put on for myself iPlayer Prime oh so Prime there that will link your app so you can scan that with your phone and link it to your Prime account now TV YouTube okay I'm not on about I'm not bothered about turning on the TV via Wi-Fi to cast YouTube to it so I probably have my TV on if I'm going to do that so we can see it's just installing those in the background. It should be nice and quick and good broadband. Okay, and close. First of all, before I change any eco settings or anything, I'm gonna go straight to the retail demo because I think if you do your settings, then do your retail demo, settings will revert back to defaults and you'll have to do them again so let's go to the settings see if i can remember how to do it so it's all settings general tv management i'm going to go to store mode okay, so we can see it's over brightened the picture not a prop i'm going to go now to the home down. and that is a bright OLED it's burning my eyeballs so we can go across to oh, media player so in here we should have some pre-installed retail demos looks similar to last year that one right
back, exit, so I'm going to put it back to the home mode. Okay, sure. If it helps the situation. And we are more than happy to liaise and be that person and we can pass on information. But there are other agencies, it doesn't really matter. Go to someone you okay. trust and tell them what you know. And we will protect you. They will, will reveal who you are. Okay, while I'm in there, Thank you all very on the settings, just go to support, see what we've got there, software update. Tomorrow, you so that is defaulted to offer auto. Some people actually prefer to do it manually. I'm going to put it on auto, do the updates that way, let it do it itself. It's in store, so we're going to have to do it manually. Onto the general. Okay, so we've got under general, we've got OLED care as well. Just going to have a quick look there. Device self care, energy saving. So I'm turning off energy saving because it would dim the picture save a bit of power here and there doesn't necessarily make the picture the best also auto power off if you've got kids and teenagers that's probably good to leave on because they'll leave the tv running so with act inactivity for a set period of time no commands from the remote it will turn itself off but i'm going to turn that off and i'll turn it off when i want to turn it off that's that bit and again on picture Eco is pretty dim, so I'm going to put that to standard for the demo. Okay, so while I've got it on here, this is Freeview BBC2, so credit to Newsnight. I'm just going to turn it up. This is standard definition TV, so we'll see how well it upscales it. So I've been doing standard def on the Samsung, so we may as well have some here as well. More effectively, Artillery has been the biggest killer by far in this battle, and it's key now to what comes next which will in turn influence the wider fate of the war. I think um, the window here for um, a counter-offensive is really closing because once the Russians are too well dug in, it will become... OK, really we'll have a quick look at the TV guide while we've got it on there as well because it has been mentioned. So onto the guide button. A bit slow to load, maybe it's doing software in the background. So you can see there, the channel we're on is highlighted in yellow. BBC Two News Night, that timeline is showing the time it is now. What's on next, so workshop, whatever, junk and disorderly. I can go down the channels just pressing down, or I can use the channel up and down button to page down, channel after channel at a time, all the way into the HD. So if I want to see the same channel in HD, we'll have that News Night again as a quick demo. So press it twice, I can now view. So same channel again, but in HD. So far, the Ukrainians have not made a big push to encircle Kherson or assault its defences frontally. Western officials estimate the Russian defenders on that side of the river as being in the low thousands. It's a big pocket, 80 miles long, and that's really not... Okay, so that's Freeview HD, same so channel on BBC Ukraine Two. Get on with it? The defenders down until we can the see the difference the there abandon Kherson or surrender but if autumn arrives without a break oh, oh, two. Some will want in HD again whether Ukraine is capable of retaking its lost lands some NATO generals argue it will take months to train up new Ukrainian units capable of doing that but of course the Russians won't be sitting still during that time and to maintain the front on its current lines the West will have to keep pouring weapons and ammunition in. Russia will try to lock in its game. Welcome to Newsday, reporting live from Singapore, I'm Karishma Gaswani. The headlines, the US orders all citizens to leave Ukraine as the capital, Kyiv, braces for heightened attacks from Russia on independence. Probably by annexing... Okay, so Donbass credit to BBC Two and Newsnight for that, just wanted to do it as sample footage. So I'm going to say credit to Paramount Pictures now, try their Maverick movie trailer, because I've tried it on all the other TVs this year. And indeed, political escalation is a Eventually. 
for six months of war. The Kremlin are openly defying this as a war. Oh, so again, credit to Paramount Pictures for that. That's their content. Just trying a quick demo. I'm going to try a bit of football next. Here come the two teams, Manchester United against Inter in the International Champions Cup. So that is it for YouTube. Back to oh, Sky. From AIDS, HIV crisis to swine flu and Ebola. But it was COVID. The press conferences and the behavior yeah, of President Trump. A quick message about it turning on UHD there because it's a 4K the world. Sky box. Okay, quick look at the home menu before I go. So press the home button. We can see there a bit of advertising at the top, recent imports, our account details and a search. What's trending now across there. Going down we've got oh going down we've got the app list there. So we've got now Netflix, iPlayer, ITV, Hub, all four, my five, Prime Video, Rakuten, Disney Plus, Apple TV. You can also mirror your iPhones and also Androids to it or iPads and whatever else. Sky Store, YouTube, Apps, Sports Alert, Home Dashboard, Art Gallery, Web Browser, so put your cheap keyboard and mouse, Bluetooth ones on there, you can do some basic web browsing. Media Player, Alexa, Google Assistant, and that is it. Add it that app list to make it your own or go to the settings. Home Dashboard there, Mobile Connection Guides for your AirPlay, Import so you can have your source list there. I've only got Sky Q and Live TV. Set your sound out, so mine's set to optical and TV speakers. If you've got a sound bar, you can click on that, he says, and set it to. Ba -ba -ba -ba. There we go. You can use HDMI, ARC, and all sorts, but it doesn't detect one, so I guess I can't connect to that. Ooh. Yep, so if I could just go to the settings there, it might be an easier way of doing it. So I can go to the sound output there. 
and cycle through and Bluetooth, HDMI, ARC and whatever else. So usually at home with my AV receiver I'd use HDMI, ARC but I'll just leave it as optical air and TV speakers. Okay, back to the home mode and where we were. Okay, you can do your remote PC there as well. Going down, life's good. And there's sports alert, a lot more below. So you can set your sports alert there for anything you're interested in. Web browser recommended sites. What's streaming and across there we can go Prime, iPlayer, Apple and a few more. Editors picks, new releases and that is pretty much it. So pretty cool, obviously sign into your LG account and go to the app store for more apps. But all in all, stunning OLED TV bit thick so for myself I probably consider the G2 mounted on a wall but if it's on a stand thickness doesn't make a difference to it I'd suggest and depending whether you're bothered about it protruding from the wall or not but picture and sound are quite good from there so it's actually 13.99 at the moment for the 55 in the UK so competitive pricing it's a stunning TV it goes really bright as well if you like it really bright it will do the brightness so that is it for now goodish